Hello and welcome guys, my name is Thomas and this is yet another cool tutorial and this is for all the CSS and HTML heads out there who build a lot of forms, which is what you probably do if you ever build a web application. So we've all seen a form like this. Now in that case, it's your standard login uh, form, but imagine you had a larger form where let's say you sold something and you needed a picture or you needed, let's say, a description and all that sort of stuff. And it was a large form or a large group of forms, maybe even a form uh, split across multiple sites. But whatever we do, if we have large forms, we want to notify the user which value is optional and which one is needed for us in order to proceed with them putting it on their website or um, fulfilling whatever they want to do. And uh, to do this, the kind of convention on the web is to use a red star next to the label. So that is actually uh, what you see on the web. I don't know if it's written down somewhere. And how would you do that? Well, you would, of course, tack on a span or something like that. And then go ahead, style, color red, and font weight bold or something. Refresh in the browser, and of course that would work. Now, the problem with this is what you would have already guessed. If you want to reuse this, you need to copy and paste, copy and paste, and copy and paste every time you want to have this. Now, that does work, but is it good? No. Is it flexible? No. How could we change that up? Well, some of you might have already cried, ah, oh, Thomas, oh my God, what are you doing? You're having a style inline with, uh, with your HTML tag. That's not how you should do stuff. Well, I only did it to show you on how unflexible this was. Of course, you could always go ahead and put that into your style.css or something and uh, basically have that on somewhere else instead of going ahead and uh, putting that in line like I did. But that won't help you. Let's say instead of the uh, star, we actually wanted to have our users uh, notify with something like, uh, we need this or something like that, or there was an error or even optional. How would we do that? There is no way we could do that with conventional adding a span and uh, tacking it on. Now, there is a way in CSS using pseudo selectors. Now, a pseudo selector might not be familiar to most of you, but I can guarantee you that you've already used one. I'll put in a link down below to W3Schools that'll teach you everything you need to know about pseudo selectors. But for now, let's just say we want to uh, target our inputs and we want to use a pseudo selector, which is uh, basically initialized using a colon. And then we want to say something like hover which is the hover pseudo selector. And then we want to uh, make something like uh, a border that is three pixels in size and it's dotted red. And if you want to refresh the page, it works. If you hover over the input fields, we get a nice dotted red border. So this is already a pseudo selector. And as I've told you, every one of you probably has used hover. If they ever styled a link, they used it. So what do we want to do now? Well, we want to do a label, but do we want to target it if someone hovers the link or hovers the label in that case? No. We want to say that we want to control anything that follows after our label's content. And why don't we spell that out? Label, colon, after. And then inside of here, we can do nice stuff. So you'd, you'd ask yourself, ah, Thomas, how the heck would I put in uh, content into you know anything after the label? I mean, it's just CSS. You can't do anything in there, can you? And in fact, you can. Now, there is an attribute many people don't know about, which is called content. And you can set literally text content into there and it'll appear. So let's say content star, make it color red, and the font weight bold again. Okay, so if we refresh in the browser, you'll see that every label has this red star uh, next to it, which is one problem. 
uh, because let's say we have this remember me. Now, do you need people to tack on remember me or to tick on remember me if they if they want to log in? No, it's an optional field that someone can tick on or click on uh, if they need or want to be remembered by our site and not typing their credentials every time they visit us, but they can choose not to. So how do we go about that? Well, one really easy solution which I'd use is that we tack on a class to our label. In that case, let's say it's important. And another little issue I have with this is that the star is standing there directly after the colons of our description, which is what I don't like. I'd like to have a space before the star, so we'll add that. Now, keep in mind, in the content attribute, it's not possible to use um, sp specific HTML stuff like and NBSP uh, in order to add a white space or something like that, so you'd really just have to type it in, or if you want to use... Uh, Unicode characters, put them into there, and there you go. So to use it, of course, we need to give the class a label, uh, not the, the label a class, that way around, I'm sorry. And then we need to refresh the browser, and of course it works. Now you might say, well, Thomas, you babbled on for five minutes on flexibility, and now you tell us that we have to do the same thing with classes. How laughable is that? Well, it's quite so that you have to do this for everything you want a style that doesn't have a class. But imagine this. Imagine you had a class that... Uh, let's make a class. Let's make a class called green. And let's say the color is green for this one. And then we want to style our labels uh, that way. So we had a class of green on every label. And bam. And you'll see, oh, it's green. But... Not only that, but we already have the class, and then we can tack on as many classes as we want, which is great. The only thing you need to do is after one class, you have to hit a space, and then you tack on the other class. And this is really nice, because lots of times, or what I see all the time, is that there are already classes applied to a label, or some sort of styling applied to the label, which you can add this to. In fact, if you just said, oh, I only have labels where it's needed, and I really want to show the user that that is true, and I want to uh, do something else for an optional, well, you can do that as well. You can say, oh, um, I want to have every label to have this red star next to it. And if you might remember, um, now we can basically get rid of the, of the class altogether. And... Um, work with it that way, refresh the browser, and oh, everything has it again. But remember me, we didn't want to have it uh, in that case. So what we could do is apply a class selector to our little label, which is called optional, and then say content is nothing. Of course, remove all the other rules in here. And then we give that label, that checkbox, we give that a class. And the class is optional. And it'll overwrite your general label settings. So if I refresh in the browser, you can see, oh, the red star is gone. So now, every, every time we add another form input, like so, let me add some. One, two, three, four, five. We just added them, refresh. Oh, they're all required, but let's say we don't need uh, uh, that the third one in the row. So we just, on the third one, we'd go ahead, we add a class of optional, and here we go. It's not there anymore. We don't, as we specified that this is optional. Now, another great thing about this method of doing stuff is, as I said, we can change the content. For example, we could state, we need this or something like that. Refresh, bam, it changed. On the optional ones, we could say something like optional, optional. Refresh in the browser, there we are. And of course, if you want to reset the color property, uh, we need to do that right here. So black color for that one, bam. And this is the beauty of this. This is so flexible, and I think you can see why it is. 
We can't tack on anything to this using the after pseudo selector. Um, or in case you want to deal with prices, not only in forms, but let's say you want to have something like uh, a little uh, a shop, as I already introduced in my example, um, and you need it to have something like a price field. Like let's make a div, and let's say the div, I don't know, ID is, let's say price or something like that. Of course, in a shop, you should have that as a class. So let's change that. And we'll say something like 27, 70 or something like that. And let's say your shop software is made in, the way, in a way where it can attach any, um, any symbol for the currency you're working in. Like let's say we had a multilingual, multi-currency uh, shop software, which, which could deal with dollars, euros, pounds. What well what we could do here on our prices on all of our prices we could say price after content let's say the euro sign as I'm in Europe now refresh and you'll see every price will have the euro sign next to it no matter what so isn't that great that's the power of pseudo selector and uh, or pseudo selectors and uh, i'd advise you to use them as regularly as you can as much as possible whenever they make sense which they largely do and i hope you could learn something from this little video tutorial and see you on another occasion goodbye